Our last episode was the week of exploration. Taking motorbikes to beautiful waterfalls, walking to viewpoints overlooking the city of Samana in the Dominican Republic, and rowing to caves in the National Park, hidden away between the rocks, on private beaches, and deep in the mangroves. But the time has come to leave the Dominican Republic behind as hurricane season is fast approaching in the Caribbean. This week, we take you with us as we depart for our longest offshore sail yet. We share how we shower and entertain ourselves while underway and learn one very important lesson the hard way about how a furling jib can easily demast a sailboat. We left the National Park with stormy skies, but we did not want to miss our weather window. So we pulled up the mainsail, unfurled the jib, and set off from the Dominican Republic. With light winds forecasted for most of the trip, we hoped for an easy crossing of the infamous Mona Passage between the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. And all up, we expected that our trip would be approximately five days and over 400 nautical miles, including tacking, until we arrived in Roadtown in the British Virgin Islands. As we departed, it seemed as though the resident whales of the bay near Samana were sad to see us go. They made sure to give us a proper send-off before we had to put the cameras away and get ready for an approaching squall. Our first squall and the only water spout or mini tornado that we have seen on the trip so far. I've been through one school. And you went where? Well, I was here from the start of the school. Oh. So then I've, I experienced the school. And then I safely retreated down the stairs before the rain after the main part of the school. It was actually a strategy in case it was a bad squall to make sure that we had fresh legs for when you got drenched and exhausted and I could go, I got you, John. I got you. You're welcome. Oh, look at that. We're too close to the wind. <laughs> Yay, not even going the way we want to go. And there should be some wind in two days time. So we'll just bob around off the southern side of Puerto Rico until the wind comes. Or let's catch a fish. Kelly's gonna try and catch a fish. I'll catch a fish. We used fishing to keep ourselves entertained. And every time we sailed through the matted seaweed that the mahis like to hide under, we would do our silent prayer to the Mahi gods. How's fishing going? Well, not so well. I think our lures work once, that's it. They're like a one-time thing. Oh, caught a fish. Not gonna work again. I think I saw Dave bite onto that. Dave hasn't come back yet. We'll just wait, we'll just wait to see what Dave says. Oh, oh, anyone seen Dave? No, did not bite it. And they just follow it, just waiting. Me a fish. It's really annoying. I just want to fish. Maybe we should open a new lure. <laughs> but sometimes the mahi prayers did work, and we would hook something on the line. It was always depressing to start reeling it in, only to find out that it was a barracuda. But this time, there was a definitive moment where you knew you had caught a mahi. I reeled in my first fish! 
So we got our delicious mahi, and now is my favorite part about fishing. Well, no, my favorite part is eating the ceviche, but I'm making the ceviche, preparing for my favorite part about fishing. So we're just putting a little bit of every fresh vegetable we have, and then we'll put some citruses with it and a little bit of spice, and it will be delicious. After mixing the ceviche and letting it soak, we had a feast. But sweating in the tropical sun while catching fish meant that after our snack, it was time to clean up. And with no shower on board, we had a bath in our tub that is over 8,000 feet deep. I think a shower is necessary for you. I know, I stink. Good thing there's no such thing as smell-o-vision. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever make that joke again. I'm scared! Oh, oh okay. Oh. It's really nice. Look for shadows. No shadows. Anything dark and scary? Nothing dark and scary. Ah. I'm using your method where I get wet and then suds up and then get back in. even feel guilty because it's our ocean friendly shampoo. I feel like this is how men live because men always just like use their body wash as shampoo whereas women are always like I've got my body wash and then my body toner and then my hair shampoo and my second round of shampoo and, and then my deep conditioner and my leave-in conditioner and my you know. We get the gist. What women do, I don't know what they do. <laughs> You've given up being a woman now that you live on a boat. Yeah. Which is, it shouldn't be the way, Kelly. I have. Oh, God, it's slippery. <laughs> But it wasn't all dancing and dolphins. As we neared the US Virgin Islands, we furled our jib and prepared to motor. But the furler twisted and snapped our forestay that holds up our mast. We immediately dropped the full mainsail and secured our spare halyards to the bow to ensure the mast stayed upright. John placed a radio call to the US Coast Guard to let them know about our troubles 
and ensure that the 10 miles through the cut to the BVIs was an easy passage. And Captain United yeah, Coast Guard, I have a, a general weather report for the area. The winds are around 15 knots, uh, seas are around 3 feet. I copy. Uh, copy that. Uh, that's about what we've got at the moment, so it shouldn't get much worse. The United States Coast Guard, Roger, that's good. Copy, Captain. We'll be standing by on, on Channel 16 for when you safely reach uh, Roadtown. And if nothing further, Captain, the United States Coast Guard will be shifting out. We arrived to Roadtown early that morning and tied off to a mooring with the mast upright and intact. Damage assessment, which is always fun. I've assessed the damage. Go ahead. Yes. Expensive or extensive? Wow. You pick. <laughs> Probably both. We lowered the furl jib, and due to the broken stay, the foils came down with it. The wire needed to be remade at a local rigging shop, so we removed the seized wire from inside the foils and the connections at each end to bring into town. This goes up here, and I've just taken the pin out, and it is rocking like crazy, and I do not like heights, so I am getting down. What happened? I'm telling you that furler wasn't working right. You reckon it's a furler? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon it's a furler too. Yeah. And it looks like it's all very recent, so it just happened. It's a really terrifying sort of experience up there. I don't love heights. And uh, add in a rocking boat. Back to the coffee. Back to, oh, I like the coffee pose though. You should try and work that in. A very George Clooney of you. It says Mrs. A very Amal Clooney of you. Who's Amal? George's wife. Ah. We have just arrived and checked in to the British Virgin Islands, which was a bit of a schmuzzle and took all morning. But we need to put up our courtesy flag. So I've been going, I've gone through the flag box four times and it's definitely not here. I've Googled the picture. I know what the flag looks like. And so, my new plan, although I think I've misplaced it, is to take, sorry Japan, take the Japan flag and convert it because it's a very simple background. Oh, it's near Korea. I think it's on the other side of the Korea bundle. Uh, both geographically and in the flag bundle. And I've got, I've only got dry erase markers, so there's the potential this makes a huge mess if it rains. There's Japan. Okay. The design that we're going for looks a bit like that. Now, my aunt used to watch, Auntie Marilyn, hello, used to watch this art show where he'd like, get your supplies and, and do it all. Uh, so it's going to be just like that. So everyone, get out your Japan flag and together we are going to make a British Virgin Islands flag. Now you're going to need your red marker first and uh, I'm going to go for the sweeping coloring, not the fully blended background because I'm on a budget and I'm conserving ink. Now, we need the British, oh that's gonna be tricky, we need the British on sign over here which I did not leave any white, so that was a bit of a mistake, so instead I'm just gonna draw the blue triangles. Ah, oh, that looks nothing like it. That's perfect. Okay. If you don't have a yellow, just do what I do and uh, just draw the green square. 
They can't get mad if you've tried. I mean, I don't know. We've never been questioned on our courtesy flag, so we hope they can't get mad if you've tried. There's a woman in a dress. Looks like a keyhole. Okay, so we're done. Here is our new British Virgin Islands flag. Amazing. The artwork, obviously, runs in the family. And you really must be so proud. Now let's go hang it up. I've just defaced a Japanese flag so I can never go back there. If they see this, maybe they censor YouTube in Japan so no one will see this. It's not China. We can help. After checking in, our first priority was to get the rigging fixed. The local rigging shop had it finished in 24 hours, and a nearby marina allowed us to rent the dock by the hour to put it all back together. The job only required us to loosen off all the other rigging and combine the brain power of us three, a couple of neighboring boat captains, and our rigger Kyle at New England Yacht Rigging in Rhode Island to make sure that we had it all correct. Now that our mast was re-secured and definitely staying upright, we were free to explore this new country that we had arrived in. Stay tuned for next week as we buy a used dinghy motor to replace the one that was stolen. We begin exploring the beautiful anchorages of the BVIs and John gets a new mistress, the kind of mistress that I approve of as it means a lot less scary times at anchor and an easier job every single time we drop the pick. Plus, we get to experience the world of charter boats in the BVIs. What you doing? Watching these guys, they've, they've just dropped their anchor like on our anchor. <laughs> <laughs>